Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial where I'm going to be having a look at the perspective projection um, ability in Affinity Photo um, but using it to crop rather than what it was probably designed for. Now as for what it is actually designed for it is probably better to watch the Chris P. Williams video about the uh, projection perspective um, and I will add a link to this video in the description for this video that I'm making now so if I come back to Affinity Photo like I said we're gonna be, I'm going to be using this for sort of like a sneaky way of doing a crop um, I'm not 100% certain how and when you might use this but I thought it was worth a quick look now, as most of you may know, there is perspective tool down here, but that's not what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using, it's in the layer menu, and you come to live projection, and then down to perspective projection. But I'll come to that in a second. So as you can see, this is a picture of my wife actually, looking at one of her favorite artists in the Guildhall Gallery, back in, in 2016 um, so if I wanted to sort of grab this picture obviously the perspective is wrong in the sense of if I wanted to sort of make it straight on it's not it won't work because it's sort of going from left to right getting larger on the left and smaller on the right so you couldn't just use the crop tool because it wouldn't work I just try and do a quick crop as such, especially if we just go for the picture part of this. As you can see, that wouldn't crop very well. So let's cancel that. So this is where I'm going to use the projection, perspective projection, sorry. So I'll come to layer, live projection, perspective projection. And you just get this grid with the four nodes in the corner, or corners I should say. So it's just a case of clicking and dragging this grid to where you want it. So I'm just going to put it roughly where I want it at the moment. Put it there, put that there. So that's roughly where I want. Now I'm going to zoom in because it is easier to move smaller amounts when you are zoomed in. So I will put that in that corner. Just click and drag this down here. Get that in that corner. And then the last one, and obviously this will work best in subjects like this that are square. But you could use other items, sort of put them in a square crop and then sort of erase or use masks to hide bits that you don't want later on. So let me just zoom out again. So that is the grid in the area that I want. So, just to sort of confirm this, if I just click on the Move tool, it will make that area that I've selected now like fill the screen. Now, obviously the perspective of this is now gone a bit in the sense of it's sort of stretched out and this lady and girl look a bit too wide. So, I'm going to then sort of alter this. So, at the moment, this layer is locked. So, I'm just going to unlock it by clicking on the padlock there. And then, because I'm on the move tool, I can just bring this in to make it look a bit more in keeping. 
Yes, I think that's okay. It's not too bad. Maybe, maybe just a tad more. So you could then save this and you have cropped that image and got the perspective looking like it is straight on. Now, I have fiddled around with this, like this is a previous one I did earlier where I did the same crop and then I just added a border, sort of a frame. So, if you were, for example, you were doing a composition, or, you know, an interior competition, composition and you wanted to add some pictures on the wall this is one way that you could do it sort of find a, an image with pictures that you want and then use this to crop out those images add a frame and hang them on the wall of the image that you're making a composition of um, I have sort of this is an outdoor picture but I have put that image up here on the wall um, the perspective is not quite right, I was, it's almost there, but that just gives you an example that where the picture originally started being bigger on the left and getting smaller on the right, I've now moved it over here and it's now bigger on the right and getting smaller on the left. And to do that, I did use the perspective tool that is down here, but that's a totally different video. Um, what I will do is I will sort of show you how to sort of make a quick frame around this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight this layer and I'm going to copy it, come up to file and new from clipboard just so that I've got rid of all that excess background because I just want a certain amount of background not all that excess and it's easy, I find it easier to do it this way just come up to document and resize canvas and highlight the middle anchor point and I'm just going to change this 1880 to 1980 and the other side will change when once I click resize so I now have an even amount of a pretty much even amount of document space behind that image I'm then going to add a new pixel layer I'll put it below the image and I'm going to flood fill this with a colour and I'm going to go for a sort of a yellowy brown colour so for like gold and I'm going to add noise to this now yours might be set on opacity but if you click on opacity the slider will change to noise so I put noise at 100% and I'll just click in there to flood fill this with colour. Maybe that's not quite dark enough. Let's go slightly darker. Yeah, that's a bit more gold. And then I'm going to add an FX to this and I'm going to click on 3D, click on the word 3D to give me the options and I'm just going to push up the radius, maybe change the direction of the lighting um, to about there. I am also going to click on bevel and emboss click on the word bevel emboss to get the options and just have a little tinker around with this as well 
and I'll close that. So there you have your picture cropped perspectively, if you see what I mean. And just for fun, I added a frame around it. So basically, that is the end of this video. I would have, like I said, advised you to look at Crispy Williams' video to sort of really look at how the perspective projection should be used. Thank you for watching and goodbye.